At the Gatwick Sim Club's November meeting, Peter Dobson demonstrated his brilliant circuit boards interfacing X-Plane to our Seneca instruments. These chips here are the PWM drivers and there's four channels per chip and I can't believe it. So basically you can drive four single pointed instruments or two dual, pointed, dual pointer instruments from each of these chips. This will drive up to seven um, incandescent lights or little LEDs so you've got indicators on the instrument panel so it light those up. So the job of this board is purely output. It doesn't take input at all. It does take signals from the flight simulator and output them in whatever formats needed to drive whatever instruments or indicators you connect to the um, right. to the board. This is the most simplistic type of instrument. I love this instrument because it's just a straight synchro driving a, a, a pointer. AI is now flying the aircraft so don't have to worry about it anymore. So what we've got here, we've got ASB, artificial horizon and altimeter all working and if you just pan across here you can see airspeed artificial horizon. So it says 2,700 feet climbing uh, with about uh, 7 degrees goes up and 110 knots. 110 knots uh, should be climbing and the altimeter is rising, which you can see it is. So it's all doing what it should do. There are some limitations in this and that is as much that at the moment I have only been able to get integers from the flight simulator. And the net result of that is the airspeed goes up in one knot increments and you can actually see it stepping up and down, which is a bit of a nuisance. Oh, it's more than, uh, more than adequate for our purposes. I, I, well, that's really the question. Is it adequate yes. enough? Yes. And the same goes for the artificial horizon. It comes out in one degree steps, are now descending, and you can see the descent is going down in one degree steps. The altitude is fairly smooth. That's got a different limitation, and that's due to the A to D converter that's used to convert the signal in here into its height. So what I've done is I've put an amplifier onto the interface card. Here's the interface card, and. Uh, the amplifiers are there and there. There's two two channels of amplifier, and they've got a um, a four degree, sorry, a times four gain on them. So basically, any height between ground level and six thousand feet runs like this, nice and smoothly. And each of these increments is nine feet. You can see it just you just about see it stepping. Yes, yes. If you climb above six thousand feet. The, it changes from the, the, the four times amplifier to the straight version from here. And the increments then become 35 feet. So you can actually see it stepping up if you're over 6,000 feet. And that is a limitation of the A to D converter inside this chip here, because it's only 12 bit. But for our purposes, well, we, again, we never get up to 5,000 5, feet <laughs> in a simulation mode. The other thing I'm thinking of doing is I've found a tw uh, 16 bit A to D converter, which is SPI driven. Now I've got an SPI interface on here, which is that one there. So I can link in an external A to D converter Ooh. via SPI and rewrite the software to accept that as the altimeter reading instead. Now with 16-bit resolution you won't see it, it'll be so no. smooth. The speed start, you can see the speed incrementing in one knot steps, look, you can actually see it stepping up. Um, this is actually stepping in one knot, st in one degree steps as well, you just about see it. But the interface card itself has enough capability to drive a lot more instrumentation than I've got I here. Six previously. Yeah, yeah. so I've, I've made three cards so far which should be enough to handle um, engine instruments, primary display, and of course the EFIS will look like that. It'll be um, a GNS 500.